everyone, I'm Sean Frangella, and in this quick tip, we're gonna talk about how to use Photoshop to quickly and easily create bump or normal map textures for creating 3D textures with some of the new 3D updates for Photoshop CC 2015. In Photoshop, if we go to Window Workspace 3D, we get this whole other crazy 3D workspace that can be a little intimidating to people, but there's two new things that they added that really are useful if you do a lot of 3D work or if you're just getting 3D files and need to know what to do with them. One is letting you quickly and easily create bump and normal maps. And the other is the option to, to simplify a mesh if you have an existing model and you just need to take down the complexity a bit. So if you're working with 3D and you have an image that you wanna use as a texture, say I have this ice texture that I've used before when I need to create 3D objects that have ice if I wanted to create a bump map, which is a black and white image that'll create highs and lows in the texture without needing to add geometry, what I used to do is open this up and then go to image adjustments, black and white, adjust it from there, save this down. And if you wanted to do a normal map, which is a much more useful texture image, but a little more complex, it was a lot more complicated. Now what we can do is quickly and easily create these right in Photoshop and then either keep them in Photoshop or save them out for your 3D program of choice. So if I just had a new file, I'll just make a new file of 2000 by 2000. And I'm in my 3D workspace. If I just want to get a basic object to create some textures from, I can go to my 3D and I'll go to mesh from preset and grab any of these. I'll grab a sphere because that's a good starting point. And I'll press create. In my 3D panel, if I click the sphere material and go to properties, this is all the material properties. So if you're in 3D, this is how you'd be building a texture. But if you're in Photoshop, it works similarly. If we wanted to put this ice texture on this sphere, what we can do is change diffuse by clicking edit texture. And then I'll just select all of this image, copy and paste. And I can just rotate and scale this into place here. Press enter and save this. Now I have a sphere with those ice textures, so that's great. And if we're in a 3D program like Cinema 40 or Maya, that's kind of where we'd start. We'd have an object like this, and we add some material under color, and then we want to add a bump or normal map. Well, rather than just changing the image to black and white in Photoshop, what we can do is click on our sphere material, and for bump or normal, we can click this folder icon, and go to generate bumps from diffuse. And when I click that, it'll open up this little window where it will take the diffuse texture, which in this case is the ice, and let me edit how this bump map is going to be created. And if I wanted to get a really useful file out of this, I'll just click cancel. I could create a normal map very easily with just one button. I'll click this folder button, generate normals from diffuse. And now it's going to create this normal map, which is even more useful because it's getting a more three-dimensional representation of this rather than just black and white. And I can adjust my contrast details to my liking, and that looks pretty good. And then I can click OK. And it's going to update that and be more believable. And this is really useful no matter what 3D program you're working because you can grab those images that you just created and save them out. So if I go to my Diffuse Edit Texture, I could save this out as a TIFF in this folder that I quickly made. So I'll just save this as ice main, TIFF, PNG, whatever you want to, and uncheck layers and save. And then I can go grab that normal map by going to normal, edit texture, and same thing, save this out. I'll call this ice normal map as a TIFF with no layers, save. And I'll save it as 32-bit with no compression. And then if I go into my 3D program, what I can do is load in that new ice texture and then on the normal map here in Cinema 4D, I'll click on normals, load that texture up and look at all that detail that's created just from that image to make this a lot more believable. And it's a super useful way to create quick normal maps from any texture very easily in Photoshop. As a heavy 3D artist, I'm really excited about how easy that is and how useful it's going to be for creating custom textures. It's a really useful new feature, and if you want to learn more about other new features, you can check out some of my other quick tip videos on additional Photoshop features by clicking on any of those buttons. 
And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to get even more motion graphics, Photoshop, 3D animation, and VFX tutorials sent every week. You can also find me on Twitter. I'm at Sean Frangella if you want to ask questions or interact on the social networks. And if you want to help keep my tutorials going, you can check me out on Patreon at patreon.com slash Sean Frangella where you can get all sorts of bonus content by supporting my show. Thanks for watching and I will see you at the next video. If you like watching these tutorials and want to see more episodes more often, you can help keep the show going by lending your support on Patreon at patreon.com slash Sean Frangella. More importantly, if you want to throw in a couple extra bucks, you can get bonus content like project files used in the tutorials, answers to direct questions, live hangouts for questions, and even request specific tutorial topics for me to use for my next video. Also be sure to subscribe to the show by clicking the subscribe button or visiting the show homepage at youtube.com slash Sean Frangella. And if you're hip with social media and have a question about this tutorial, you can find me on Twitter at Sean Frangella. As always, thanks for watching and I will see See you at the next video.